might have to switch to radio and out your voice. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, our uh, our CFO Latino and I are presenting basically when your friend comes to you and says, I have, I'm in foreclosure. Or as is always presented to us, is I have this friend who's in foreclosure and what I'm going to cover is basically the homeowner's choices on the next slide. Okay, this is brought to you by Occupy Long Beach and I ran across this where I was preparing the PowerPoint. I believe you can't change the world unless you change your community you live in first. And that's a quote from somebody named Sunrise who was at Lincoln Park. I thought that was great. <laughs> According to the French telegram, that is Sunrise. So I'll that, is sunrise. that is Sunrise. <laughs> Simply by making the back payments. 
plus the attorney's fees and the recording costs and all of that stuff. So if you've missed three months of payment, they're going to add probably two months worth of crap charges out the back end, and you can bring the mortgage current at any point up to that point. Okay? So that's through the notice of default. Once this, this 90 day period runs, there is nothing anybody can do short of a bankruptcy to stop the process. All right, the, the, the gears are engaged and the, the, the motor is moving forward. It's 90 days. The next step is what is called a notice of trustee sale to be filed. Again, same process. It is reported with the county recorder. It will be mailed to you. It will be mailed certified mail. And somebody physically will show up at your house and take a copy of this to your front door. And then they'll take the local paper, go click, because they need to have proof of this. Now, <coughs> the proof of this is really elastic, especially given they'll just lie about it afterwards anyway, but that's another story. All right. Then you wait 21 days, and assuming there is not some kind of intervention, a auction takes place and the house is sold. About 70% of the houses do what's called go back to beneficiary, which means the mortgaging bank takes it back. About 30% of the houses are sold to third parties. And honest to God, there is an industry of people that buy properties through foreclosure sale, renovate them, and do whatever. Okay? So that's it. Next slide, please. All right. If you're going to do something to fight for the house, it must be done before the sale. After the sale date, it is insanely difficult to get it overturned. You have to show something mechanically went wrong with the sale, which is very, very difficult to do. In fact, there's now a raging case going on up in Santa, Santa, Santa Barbara County where they were apparently publishing their notices. One of the things that you don't see is they have to publish the notice of trustee sale. It has to be published in what's called the notice of newspaper of general circulation. Um, if you buy the throwaway papers, if you look in the back with all the fictitious business name filings, if you've ever seen those, that's a newspaper of general circulation. Well, one of the trustee companies in Santa Barbara County found somebody to do it cheaper, so we're doing all the publications there, only they're not a newspaper of general circulation, which kind of creates a problem. All right. Do not wait until after the trustee sale. That you're, you're, you're hosed at that point, and I mean that literally. All right, after that, depending on what happened, you will be contacted typically by a real estate agent. If it's a, a third party buyer, they may contact you directly, and you will be offered what is called cash for keys. That's where you will be offered money to leave the property intact within a certain time frame, usually 15 days, 30 days, something like that. Now, the amount of cash for keys varies wildly. Typically, it's in the move-out money, three to $4,000. There's a radio ad that you may have heard if you listen to talk radio where somebody says that they've been able to get their, their customers as much as $35,000 doing for, for cash for keys, okay? If you were having this conversation at the Coto Deposit Clubhouse, that would be a viable choice, all right? We're not, so don't expect $35,000. All right, next. Okay, if you don't take the deal, you will be evicted, flat out. Eviction is a separate legal process, not covered by the foreclosure. Now, I'm not gonna get into the mechanics of it. Suffice to say, once you get an eviction notice or an eviction reported against you, it becomes very difficult to find another place to rent because a lot of the major landlords that deal with the large apartment buildings have a database of people who were evicted and they won't rent to you. All right, so it narrows your, your, your area a lot. All right, also understand the following. I used to practice in Santa Ana and there were a lot of problems with this, so I'm gonna bring this up. In California, evictions are handled by the Sheriff's Department. Not guys in pickup trucks. The Sheriff's Department. They will show up in uniform with the dog and the shotgun and the whole works. Okay? So next. 
All right, so everybody, if you take nothing else from this presentation, this is yes on the eviction, this is no on the eviction. All right. Okay. If you do nothing, foreclosure is what's going to happen to you. All right, that's, that's the default choice. Okay. Anybody recognize this? This is bliss. This is the default Windows desktop. I can this is all right, yes. Yeah. Here are your choices. Uh, loan modification, short sale, walking away, bankruptcy, suing the bastards, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the mortgage <laughs> settlement. Next. Loan modification. This is everybody's real number one choice, okay? A loan modification is a material change to the terms of the loan. 20 bucks is not a loan modification. 20 bucks is a throwaway a material change in the hundreds or possibly thousands of dollars. Otherwise, the math doesn't work, okay? The goal is to get a substantial reduction of the monthly payment. The goal is not to live in a house free forever, all right? So anybody that's focusing on not to live in the house forever for free, you're, you're, in, the wrong, you're, you're in the wrong business, okay? There are ways of living there for free for a while, but not forever. All right, loan modifications are, are very, very difficult to get, all right? This is the strike zone in baseball. This is what you have to hit for a loan modification. Anything outside of this, you're not going to get the modification. Yeah. All right, these are your parameters, all right? The debt-to-income ratio, which we'll cover for a minute, the loan-to-value ratio, which we'll cover, the location of the home and the hardship. Next. All right. The debt to income ratio is your monthly income divided by your house. Next. All right. You need to do that calculation, and you're going to fall basically into one to one of three bands. Now, these numbers are based on a program called TAN, which is a dismal failure, but this is what we're stuck with. The goal for HAMP is to get people into a, a mortgage payment of 31% or less. So if your mortgage payment is less than 31% of your income and you're not making your house payment, you need to consider either stop gambling, rehab, whatever, okay? In every case I've ever seen, if that's a problem, there's something else going on. Between 31 and 70% a loan modification may be possible assuming other criteria are met. And from uh, having done hundreds of these, if your debt to income ratio is greater than 70%, the math doesn't work, and you're better off either burning the place down, short sale, you know, something like that. <laughs> Next. All right. The loan to value ratio is the, for, the value of your mortgage divided by the market value of the home, okay? And for per this purpose, we're interested only in the first position trustee. All right? The first position trustee is the mortgage that you signed for when you bought the house. Now, how many of you have a second or an ELOC or something like that? All right? Those don't count. They can be discounted like crazy. Okay? So we're talking about first position trustee only. Next. All right. This is the criteria that we intended to follow in my office. All right? If the debt to income ratio on the first trustee is less than 150% worth, worth doing a loan modification, if it's more than 150%, it doesn't make sense economically simply because you're probably not going to get a principal reduction on the first. They just they, they will die before permitting that, regardless of what you hear on the evening news. And it doesn't make a lot of sense in a lot of cases because of the value of the neighborhood. I, you don't want to straddle somebody with a $3,000 modified loan payment in a neighborhood where they can walk across the street, buy a new house, and have a, a payment half of that. And the most graphic example of that I've ever seen is a guy that came to us to do a loan modification, and he came down from a place called Hellendale, all right? Hellendale, you go 15 um, to Apple Valley, you go east on the Route 66, you go to Apple Valley, if you go west, you drive for a while, and you end up in Hellendale, all right? Hellendale is not the end of the world, but you can see it from there. <laughs> <laughs> he 
he had about a $300,000 mortgage and wanted a loan modification. So we ran some comps in his neighborhood and we found what's called a model match, which is the same house in a different lot for $30,000. And I looked at him and said, how much money have you got saved up? He said, I've got 15 grand. So if you're not going to make your payment, his payment is about $2,300 a month. If you're not going to make your payment on the house and they're going to foreclose on it, you need to bank the money and you're going to buy a house. All right, so about 11 months later, foreclosure process is done. He called me up to thank me because now he owned his house, and, you know, about three streets down, free and clear. All right, so that's why the 150% deal comes in. All right, the other criteria that you want to look at is the location. Is everybody from Long Beach or nearby Long Beach? Okay, you're good. Did anybody drive in from Hesperia, Murrieta, High Desert, anything like that? Okay. Um, I need to check it, all right? Especially in Western Riverside County, Temecula, Murrieta, that area, you are paying Orange County prices for a place that is way the hell out there. And I submit to you that prices in some of those areas may never recover. Because gasoline is going to be four bucks a gallon by Memorial Day and ain't going back down. And prices are just not going to recover in those areas. So it may not be worth doing a loan modification in Barstow, Temecula, uh, Wildemar, that area, because you, you, you can buy another house cheaper and actually save money. Next slide. All right. So this is what you're going to need. Um, you will need a source of income. To do a loan modification, money must be coming into the house. What's considered income is going to vary from lender to lender and from cubicle from lender to lender because regardless of what little training they had, none of them enforce it right. Okay? How many of you have ever dealt with DMV? Okay. That's what you're dealing with. All right. You will need a hardship letter, which we'll talk touch on in a minute. You will need patience. This is a process that is going to take months, if not years, and then courage or a good bartender or both. All right, so you're going to get out there. Yes. All right, this is what you're dealing with on the other side, okay? Um, you have to create the difference, um, ancient, ancient equipment, you know, this is, this is what they do at lunch. Um, a friend of mine once told me that he went out to the loan modification department at Countrywide, which was in Simi Valley and is now a part of the Eagle Empire, I mean Bank of America. And they had a bank, they had a room with about 20 fax machines in it, and the fax machines were basically running 24-7. Well, the fax machine tender guy was gone for a couple days, and the fax machines just kept blasting away. When he came back three days later, instead of organizing the faxes, they just scooped them into a dumpster. Okay? This is what you're going to get. All right? Do not give them a single original anything. They will lose it. You keep copies of everything that you're going to submit to them, and you keep detailed records of who you talk to, when you talk to them, what was said. All right? Because rule number one, how do you know when your bank is lying to you? They're using English! That's right! Okay. <laughs> They're going to lose your paperwork. They're going to lie to your face. They're going to lie to your representative. They do all of that. All right? Your goal, if you're going to do the loan modification route, is real simple. You have to outlast them. All right? Because eventually it will get from, it'll work its way up the food chain from the amoeba to the ocelot to, you know, whatever, to somebody actually capable of thinking. And I think there's, there's three at Wells Fargo and four at Bank of America and three at Chase and the rest of them are at Goldman Sachs. And they're hard to talk to unless you have Tim got your cell phone number and then you can just patch it through. But anyway, that's, that's another story. <laughs> All right, but eventually somebody somewhere will come up with a loan modification, at least a temporary one. Next. All right, <laughs> principal reduction. You're not going to get this on your print on the first trustee. Okay. 
if it happens to you, it's an aberration. You need to go out and buy a, lot, a lottery ticket. It just, it's not going to happen. All right? That's just the way it is, as Carl Jr. says. All right? On the second trustee, the people with the HELOC, okay, this is you. All right? They're between a rock and a hard place. One, their paperwork is crappy and they know it. And two, they can't foreclose because they got to buy off the first. All right? So they are, the legal term for it is screwed. <laughs> so be merciless to them. All right? Um, about two weeks ago, one of my buddies who still does this, I don't know why, but I keep him in Bushmill so he's happy. Um, so the $129,000 HELOC for $26,000. And this was from a very large bank, which I can't mention, but uses stagecoaches in their advertising. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. These are your current California laws. All right. Number one, and Walter will back me up on this when he speaks a second. You're not going to be able to find an attorney to do a loan modification. Okay. Um, it's just it's quicker and cleaner. All right. <laughs> Nobody can take an advance fee to do a loan modification. So if you find somebody to do a loan modification and they tell you, "Well, I need three thousand dollars," run, don't walk. Okay, out the door. You, they cannot sign what is called the power of attorney. All right? So read all the documents and make sure nothing says power of attorney, limited power of attorney, anything like that. Okay? And they either have to have a DRE license, that's a real estate license, or a state bar license. Both of these fine organizations have websites. Punch in the person's name and they will tell you if you're licensed or not. Next. All right, a couple other things that they threw me in here, so I'm supposed to do this. Cause... All right, don't ignore lenders from your servicers, okay? They watch President Obama talk about the foreclosure crisis, too, so they know that they're supposed to be nice to you. Doesn't mean they're going to do anything or help you, but they will be nice to you, all right? Don't transfer title. When, when I was doing this a lot in, in Santa Ana, this was the thing. They would do a foreclosure rescue and they would transfer title. Don't, no. You're not signing a deed, anything like that. Sign none of that stuff. And you're paying your mortgage payment, if you're going to make your mortgage payment, to the servicer. Those are the guys that send you the mortgage statement once a month, okay? Don't pay it to anybody else. Just, just don't, all right? Um, and if you want graphic examples for what happens when you do these two things, there's a great blog called Equity Theft Reporter, which every day has about 10 stories of these two rules being violated. It's pathetic. Next. All right. Now, don't believe everything you hear. Regardless of how convincing they are on the radio, nobody can guarantee you a loan modification. All right? The parameters change constantly. The parameters move within the servicers. The people move within the servicers is just, it's not a sure thing. Number two, nobody can guarantee you a principal reduction. That banks will die before they give you a principal reduction on the first trustee, all right? Take that, just mark my words, all right? Nobody has an inside track. Years ago, when this started happening, there were inside traps, okay? And that inevitably meant the wholesale rep for the lender that got us into that situation. They're not wholesale reps for lenders anymore. They're waitressing at Hooters, all right? <laughs> so there are no inside traps. Next. All right, so that's loan modification, all right? If you're going to do that, you think you fit in the strike zone, how bad? The next is what's called a short sale. Next. A short sale is a situation in which the sales price of the house is less than the mortgage amount and it's sold at a discount, all right? Now, you now know more than 80% of real estate agents is about what a short sale is, all right? On, on this all right, let's be clear. In a short sale, you're selling the house, all right? You're not moving it, you're, you're, you're not selling it to your brother, you're not selling it to your uncle, none of that stuff, okay? You also won't get paid for your time in trouble except maybe a couple thousand dollars move out money, okay? They can't let you stay in the house. They can't give you money, all right? That is called flopping and is investigated by this fine organization, all right? They can't do anything about Angelo Mozilla or Jamie Diamond, but they will bust you for them. Next. All right, here's the mechanics of it. 
The house has to be listed for sale. So find a real estate agent, list the house. After an offer is made and is accepted by you, which pretty much is any offer because you have a stake in this matter, you then submit what's called a short sale package. Okay? What the short sale package is, is basically a loan modification in a different cubicle. It's an argument over the bank over who is going to take the haircut and take the loss on the loan. All right? And a lot of it is trying to figure out who actually owns the loan. And it may turn out that nobody does, at which point they flip a coin and that's who takes the loss. All right? You and your buyer are not a factor in this process. You're not even a consideration. So one of the main problems in the short sale process is keeping your buyer interested. So if you haven't had many offers on your short sale house and you finally have a buyer, you need to be that buyer's new best friend. Okay? Keep them informed as to what's going on. Next. All right. You'll need to provide some documents. Um, and I did have a handout, I did not. Um, anyway, um, I'll give you an email address at the end. If you need what documents you need, email me and I'll send it to you. All right? You need to prove you can't afford the house. And like I touched on, you and the buyer are going to factor in the process for your consideration. Okay? Okay. Um, under current California law, this was changed in October. This is a big deal. Okay? If you have a first and a second and they agree to whatever number it is that they're going to agree to, that's it. They, that is all that they're going to get paid for their time in trouble. Okay? <laughs> that's a significant change because what used to happen is the first would get paid off completely, then the second would want more money from you and would follow you around. It's like a lie. They can't do that anymore. All right? Now, because they are fine outstanding corporate citizens, they're trying to get you to sign side deals. All right? So don't sign anything not given to you by the escrow officer. Okay? Next. All right. Now, a word of caution if you are considering the short sales. All right. Back in 2008, Congress set up a program by which the, the losses from the short sale, and you'll be issued a 1099, could be written off on your taxes as a loss. Okay? That law expires December 31st of this year. Which, yes? They just extended it to 2015. Are you sure? Uh, wow, okay, great. So when did they do that? Uh, about a week ago. Really? Okay. So they hadn't done it when they prepared the spots. Okay. So anyway, they may have extended it to 2015. Thank you for that, but they may not. Okay? But just be aware that time is ticking on this. So don't flip this off. All right? Next. That's good news. All right. Both the short sale and the loan modification are going to require a hardship letter. The point of the hardship letter is not that your house, the, not that the neighborhood houses have gone down 30% in value. That is not a hardship. That's a market. You need to prove one, why, why you can't afford the payment, and two, how it makes sense for the bank to do what it is you want them to do, either a loan modification or a short sale. All right. If you want to learn how to do a short sale, okay, everybody got a paper and pencil? All right. Go to a website called Calculated Risk Blogspot. In the Google search, type in hardship letter and an incomparably brilliant mortgage writer named Tanta is going to give you nine pages on how to do it. Okay? There's nothing I can say that would improve what you will read there. Alright? So go there and read it, then write your hardship letter. Next. Can you, can you yes. The website it's calculated risk block spot. Dot com. Okay, choice number three is walking away. It does make sense in some economic conditions, okay? If, both, if, if everybody in the household has lost their job, there's no income coming in, lock the doors, shut the windows, write it out. And at the end, when the foreclosure sale comes, 
You're done, all right? It doesn't make sense in other situations. Um, be aware if you do this, it's treated like a foreclosure, and at the time that I was looking at this, which has been a little bit, the FHA fangs you, and you can't get another FHA loan for three years, all right? So that's a problem. Know that going out the back end, okay? This will also have some tax ramifications. So the year you get a foreclosure, the year you get a do the loan modification, the year you walk, the year you whatever, go see a CPA or enrolled agent, all right? This is not the time for TurboTax. Next. Yes. All right, and basically what happens is the property is returned to the lender. You can do this through what's called a deed in lieu, or you can just let the foreclosure process take its course. Either one works out. The banks don't like the voluntary walking away pit bit. You become a strategic defaulter, okay? Which in bank parlance puts you somewhere above Nazi prison guard and somewhere below um, people that vote against them in Congress, okay? So you're in that, that nether world. Um, so it will blow up your credit. If you had a 725 risk score and you start this process, you will not have that when you get out, okay? Um, Try the short sale or loan modification first. Um, next. All right, choice number four is suing the bastards. All right, number one. Okay. You have to sue. I can't resist. All right. You have to sue them for something they did wrong. All right. Because this is a non judicial foreclosure state, if you're going to sue to keep your house, you've got to do the sewer. They're not. Okay? And they need to try to prove it. Next. All right. Another alternative is what is called bankruptcy. The advantage you have with bankruptcy is an automatic stay is issued. That stops everything, including the foreclosure sale. This is a effective technique, and we'll, we'll touch on this in a second. Next. All right, in civil litigation, which is we're suing the bastards, all right, you have to sue the bank, as I touched on, all right? Now, keep this in mind. If you're going to sue, you need to get what's called an injunction to stop the process. Simply suing the bank is not going to stop the foreclosure. You need an order signed by the judge saying, stop, don't do anything until it's worked out. Simply suing is not enough. All right? And you don't automatically get the injunction when you sue. It's two separate steps. You file a complaint, you file an application for the injunction. Two different things. So if you're going to be lawyer shopping, make sure they understand it's two different things. Next. Okay. Next. We're going to talk a little bit about what, uh, what you read and see on the internet, and then Walter's going to go through it in a lot more detail. All right, everything that you've heard about fake documents, robo-signing, the 60-minute piece, all of that stuff, okay? And in robo-signing, literally, they will sit together and sign crap and then pass around notary signatures, okay? Um, there's a great piece on that covers this on 60 Minutes with the legendary Linda Green. Okay, next. It's all true. All right, and more in spades. It's, it's horrible, all right? Um, there also is an exciting concept called the Mortgage Electronic Recording System. All right. In theory, what they tried to do here is great. Kudos to them for making the attempt. What they got in practicality is foobar. Absolutely, totally foobar. And it's not fixable, and that's the sad part. Okay. This is, this is a great concept that was not made to work through misadventure. Next. Okay. Everything that you have heard on this is absolutely, totally true. However, <laughs> next. <coughs> next. None of it matters. Next. This is a Snickers wrapper. I can foreclose on your house simply with a Snickers wrapper filing a notice of, uh, notice of or default and a notice of trustee sale and somewhere along the point in the sign. Nobody's going to check my paperwork unless you do it. So literally, honest to God, if I, was, if I wanted to foreclose on this church, 
I could do that by finding those documents. Nobody's going to check your work. Next. Okay, and it's still okay to foreclose on you, even with the Alpha Body episode Snickers Bar. It's horrible. Okay? <laughs> Read it. Next. All right, bankruptcy. This is what you do the morning of the trustee sale. Okay? This stops the process cold in its tracks. Now, this has significant employment impact and can have, it will have significant credit impact, okay? I'm less concerned about the credit impact at this point. I am concerned about the, the employment impact trying to bring it up, all right? Your employer cannot fire you for filing bankruptcy, okay? Can't do that. That is protected by federal law. However, in the private sector, it can be used as a reason to not hire you. So just be aware of that. Now, if you're going to be a civil servant, they cannot bar you from, or they cannot keep from hiring you because you filed bankruptcy. It is an entirely different set of rules for the, for the private sector. Everybody clear on that? So be careful if you're going to do this. Next. Bankruptcy is your nuclear weapon, so you want to use it accordingly. All right, now, a little bit about the mortgage settlement. Um, February 9th, there was a mass rush to the microphone to announce the mortgage settlement. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the terms have not been released. In fact, the terms probably won't be released until they're signed off by a judge. And the speculation is they're not going to do that until very, very late in the game for creditor screwing reasons I don't want to get into this afternoon because my blood pressure will go up. Yeah. All right, here's the good. Some homeowners and people who lost their homes are going to get some money, okay? $2,000. Okay? If anything comes out of this and the banks actually agree and actually follow what they agreed to, this is a win. Dual track is this. Dual track is the process where you're trying to do a loan modification and they start the foreclosure process. And literally what happens is a train goes down the foreclosure track and a train goes down the, uh, the loan modification of the short sale track and whoever gets to the station first wins. Even if you're in the middle of the loan modification attempt, even if you're in the middle of the short sale attempt, it's over. They will foreclose. So they can eliminate that, great, okay? Um, Robo-signing is eliminated, right, okay. They're, they're just gonna move it from the mortgage people to the credit and student loan and car loans, okay? No, seriously, watch, okay? And there will be an appeal process for the denial of a loan modification, okay? Now, right now, the appeal of the denial of a loan modification means that you're talking from a call station in Bangalore to a uh, call station in Delhi, okay? Now, that's the difference now, but they're supposed to actually set up an appeals process. <laughs> Next. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> now, you may have heard $25 billion, okay? I have no life, so I actually read as much as I can read about this. The banks aren't popping up $25 billion. It's closer to five. Okay? The rest of the money is coming from wherever it is the bank gets their money. I, they call Ben Bernanke and they run the printing press for now. I don't know. But there, there's a very little out of pocket for the major banks. Okay? The combined, they're worth something like $500 billion to paying out five. That's, it's rounding error, but that's what they're going to do. All right? Here's where the $2,000 that comes in. Okay? More importantly, the chain of title problem created by robo signing is not addressed at all. Okay? Now, can I ask a little bit about your question you're talking about? In a little bit, Walter's going to talk about a study that just came out from San Francisco. You know, up north, Golden Gate Bridge, cable cars, all that. <clears throat> the San Francisco County Recorder's Office did their homework, which none of the attorney generals did, and came out with some truly jaw-dropping numbers as to how much of a problem this actually is. Okay, okay. 
We now know that you can screw with people's lives and screw up the National Real Estate Network and it's only going to cost you $2,000, okay? That is, that is your 30 pieces of silver. Thanks. Doesn't it feel good now? Okay. Worse, the banks are in charge of policing themselves for this settlement. All right? So we all know how that's going to work out. Sure! All right? Some people are going to get a principal bailout up to about $20,000 for their first trust fees, assuming you meet other criteria. All right? And I read that, and I couldn't figure out why they would agree to that. Okay? Because they're, they're over, they, they got you over a barrel. Okay? Then it hit me. This is targeted what's called Chapter 13 bankruptcies. Now, in a Chapter 13 bankruptcy, for reasons I don't want to get into, you can strip a second, and it becomes essentially a really large credit card debt, and it may or may not be discharged or paid off, okay? This is those mofos' attempt to eliminate that. Because if there's equity to cover the second, you can't strip it. All right? Now I know why they're giving this away. It's like, you creeps. Anyway, there we go. Now, and by far the most depressing part of this entire thing is we now get to listen between now and November 8th or 9th or whenever it is that we get to vote how wonderful this deal is. All right? Okay, next. All right. If you want to do something about this crisis, about this problem, from the privacy of your own computer, do this. You need to subscribe to this blog, okay? It's run by a guy named Martin Andelman who has written a whole lot about this and he decided to get up out of his really comfy chair and do something about it. All right, so this is his blog. You then need to send an email to this address And in the subject line of your email, put the word doer, D-O-E-R. And you'll get a very nice email back from Martin at some point. Thank you for doing it, blah, blah, blah. Here's how it works. Martin has a national presence because he's been writing about the foreclosure crisis for a long time. And if you think I'm cynical, you should listen to him. <laughs> People contact him with problems. Their house is going to be foreclosed on. So we set up the doer list, and what you will get is you will get an email from Martin saying, Hi, Joe and Susie Smith in Corvallis, Oregon are being foreclosed on. Here's what. They signed for a temporary loan modification with Bank of America. They took, Bank of America took 27 temporary loan modification payments, then decided that the corporate jet needs more fuel, so they're foreclosing. Okay? You'll get a name, address, and a loan number, and an email to the President of the Bank of America. Your job is to send an email to the President of the Bank of America telling him to stop the foreclosure. All right? This sounds like nonsense. This has worked eight times out of eight attempts. Okay? Just like cockroaches, they don't like the light. So, shine some light on it. Okay, next. That's it. Any questions? Yes. You said that after, as a result of a trustee sale, the auction, only 30% of the uh, properties go to third party buyers. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that means the bank or whatever the lender is winds up with 70%. Right. What, what, what on earth are they going to do with them? They are going to bundle them up into very large packages, move them to Goldman Sachs. And then Goldman Sachs is going to resell them to real estate investors on a mass scale. Did this happen in 1932? Yes, but in 1932 we had political will and now it's 2012 and we don't. So they're going to get away with it. Yes? Uh, what can you tell us about a trial loan modification? New kernel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me calm down. This is not okay. What they will do is you will submit your loan.
loan modification package, and they will lose it. And then you submit it again, they will lose it. You submit it again, they will lose it. About the fourth or fifth time, they will give you a temporary loan modification. And what this is based on is a program called AMP. It will give you a, a temporary reduced payment for theoretically three months while they figure out what they're going to do with the loan. And at that time, they are supposed to give you a permanent loan modification if you meet the HAMP criteria or reject you if you don't. What it is used for in a practical sense is essentially loan purgatory, where you are making temporary loan modification payments for months, in some cases years. And they either never make a decision or after 18 months or 24 months of it, they deny you for no apparent reason. So that's what a temporary loan modification is. The, the most important part one must realize regarding that is any part of the payment that you make on that forbearance agreement, not one dime will go against your principal. Correct. That's why a lot of these banks that are servicers like to transfer from one servicing company to the next because that's the way they're making their money. That part of the mortgage price. Uh, if I can just add one more comment, uh, I appreciate everything you've done. Uh, part of that credit bill that they're talking about... Sir, we can hardly hear you. I'm sorry, I'm fighting a cold. Part of that $20 billion that they're talking about, you have to understand that even though the government was the one that sued the people, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, who basically guaranteed three-quarters of the loan, have already decided that they're not going to participate, yet the government entity. So be aware of the mortgage fraud to protect yourself. Yes. I heard, I heard that the Bank of America is in some kind of trouble and might, is considering closing as many as 1,600 branches. Yes. Is that true? I, I have heard that as well. They refuse to confirm or deny it, which means it's probably true. Okay. <laughs> uh, of the major banks, they are in the most difficult financial situation because they absorb countrywide. And I have heard from more than one person with information that I think is credible that that was a shock that that, that literally Mozilla got a phone call, hi, they're going to call you, you're going to take the deal. I don't want to take the deal. This isn't a negotiation point. You're going to smile sweetly and sign the half and papers. Are we clear? Okay, so that's it. So Bank of America is in trouble. So how many of you bank at Bank of America? <laughs> <laughs> it is parachute time, people. All right, next. <laughs> Yes. So a couple things on short sales. Um, one of them you've mentioned, um, I don't know if the laws have changed, you said the first and second can't pursue you uh, for the, the, the difference, right? Yes. Now, as I understand, I don't know if the laws have changed, you, it's up to us to make sure that's in the contract that we have to have negotiated for. No. Okay. Before, I want to say July 11th, but I'm going to be wrong. Before July 11th, that was true. After July 11th, Governor Brown signed a law that says they can't do that. Doesn't mean they're not going to try to get a site deal, because these are fine, upstanding people, but as of July 1st, they can't do that. Well, yes. no, this is the second thing? This, is, yes. Um, then you mentioned about the tax exemption. Now, yes. there used to be something where if the difference in the short sale exceeded a certain amount, then you were actually liable for taxation. Is it's that currently a million dollars. But I was informed just today that that had been extended. When I when I was researching this and preparing this last week, I saw nothing that it had been extended. So that may be subject to change. But it, it's a million dollars is the cutoff limit. Yes. Um, to follow up on the earlier question, if somebody has accepted a trial loan mod, how what what advice would you give if you're trying to help them out of their situation? Keep making the keep making the payments. And if it's dragged on past about the six or nine month mark, figure that it may not happen and they need to start thinking about making other plans. Okay. And uh, did, you, did the gentleman say that trial loan modification payments are, do not apply against the principal or is that a different statement? I heard like half the, He did say the, that. They don't, they don't reduce the principal. Okay, and, and the reason for that is, I don't want to get too wonky, all right? There's, how that money is divvied up is very tightly controlled by, by the contract as to how the loan is to be serviced, and the incentive for the servicer 
is to jerk your chain as long as possible because that's how they get paid. Which is really a perverse system, but that's what we got. So trial bone mods is, think of it as purgatory, keep making them, and if it's a nine month part, you need to start thinking about packing your parachute. Yes? Yeah. I want to touch a little bit on the loan modifications because a lot of people do get loan modifications, but they're very tricky. Uh, the bank do a lot of stuff, they sometimes they, they move the, uh, the payments that people have not made behind. Sometimes the bank even uh, tell uh, some of the homeowners not to make any payments for a certain uh, amount of uh, months. Yes. And basically because they know that there's a dual process taking place yes. as well. So uh, homeowners need to be aware of those things and they also need to be aware that they may be signing off some of their rights to sue the, the, the bank. So I want to touch that. I mean, that's all, all of that is true and all of that is standard operating procedure. I mean, we, we could spend three hours discussing loan modifications, but at the end of that, I would go out and have a heart attack. And, uh, <laughs> okay, any? Yes? Um, a friend of mine, she doesn't have a second mortgage, but in order to have enough down payment to buy her house, she got an instant line of credit. So she's got a first mortgage and a line of credit. Yes. So how is that in regarding, you know, regarding, uh, you know, renegotiating? Ooh, how wonky do we want to get? Um, there are some cases um, which hold that that is treated as a single unit for loan modification purposes um, and for foreclosure purposes. Um, my, my email address is Craig, C R A I G, Triance, T R I A N C E, at Gmail. So if you want to email me, I will email you the cases. Now, big warning, okay? I will not help you with the loan modification, okay? Me, me not attorney, me not do loan modification. If, if, you want, if you want additional information on anything referenced in this presentation, email me. If you're looking for help, I'm not your guy, okay? Just to be clear, yeah. I was wondering, is there a schedule of lectures that's available online? <laughs> that, that's a bad question. So, so hit uh, if you want to email Occupy Long Beach Actions at gmail.com, and we can just gauge interest and, and maybe do. Uh, Great, you're going to be here a little bit. After. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.